Oh. Hi, Frazier. Frazier, take your All right, so here we go. Oh, there's a penguin. Okay, uh, number 10 says, uh, in a pickup game of dorm shuffleboard, this is from, what do we have, 4.5? Yes. yes. Anybody who's keeping score? Uh, in a pickup game of dorm shuffleboard, students crazed by final exams use a broom to propel a calc book along the dorm hallway. Gives you the mass of the book. Uh, it's pushed from rest through a distance of 0 0.90 meters using a horizontal force of 25 shh, shh, using a horizontal force of 25 newtons from the broom and then it attains a speed of 1.6 meters a second what's the coefficient of kinetic friction so this is sort of the given information right in terms of kinematics we also want to be thinking about a drawing of what's happening so here's the book we know the mass is 3.5 kilograms Always start with your force of gravity. Normal force is going to cancel it out. Notice I'm trying to stick with letters, not numbers, in my drawing here. Okay. Uh, the problem tells you that it's being pushed by a horizontal force from the broom of 25 newtons. So the force from the broom is 25 newtons. And the question is asking about the coefficient of friction, which implies that there's friction. Since the book is sliding, we can automatically jump to kinetic friction. So put that in your drawing. All right, and here's what I know about that. I know that that's equal to whatever my coefficient of kinetic friction is times my normal force, which is mg. Good? All right, so. How come I gave you all this nonsense? What can we, yeah, we can find the acceleration, right? Acceleration is going to be what? Vf squared minus Vi squared all over 2a. Yep. Good. Okay. 2 delta x. 2 delta x, sorry. Listen, Justin. All right. So we're going to get, uh, what, uh, 2.56 over 1.8, which gives you, what is it, 1.5? Okay. So, anyway, so that gives you an acceleration, something in that neighborhood. Any problems? Okay. And then once you've got that, it's... I'm going to keep writing this this year, and every time I write it, I think, this is a really silly way to be doing this. But I think it's going to help us, because we'll do it often enough that you'll hopefully start to remember it, which is this. Net force equals net force. All right? So what I mean when I write that, you guys, is remember, there are two ways you can find net force. One of them is Newton's second law, and the other one is the definition of net force, which is add up all of your forces. So for us, it's the force of the broom plus kinetic friction, right? Follow? So, MA equals force of the broom is 25. Force of friction is coefficient times mg. And solve it. I don't know. Here, that's going to bother me now. Let's see. What do we got? 1.6 squared divided by 1.8. Yep. All right. So uh, I guess at this point, let's plug in our numbers real quick and see what we get. The mass is 3.5. Acceleration is 1.42. That equals 25 minus the coefficient times the mass times 9.8. Solve for me. I believe, unless people have issues or concerns, I'm going to stop there. Sarah, what's up? Can you just scroll up? Yeah. Oh. No, wait. No, I mean oh, other kind of up. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, I can't. Okay. Why does my smart board hate me? Wait. No, it's fine. Oh, no. Oh, no. So why does it do that? There we go. Cool way, man. Fly through the door right now. Thank <laughs> you.
works. Yeah. Just the coefficient on a normal force. You good, Carl, or no? All right. Sarah, are you okay back there? Yeah. What are you What are you scribbling down there? No, I was just trying to force of um, kinetic friction. Does is Carla just asked about this too? Is everybody cool with where I got this? Was this too hand wavy? No. Nope. No. It's just coefficient of friction times normal force, right? Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Any problems with number ten? I'm going to move on unless somebody says not to. You're good. Okay. Watch me go. Let's see. Uh, shoot, I lost my list here. Number twelve was high on the list, so let's do twelve. Okay. What am I doing? Fighting the board for no real reason. There we go. All right. There we go. All right, number 12. Um, number 12, a bureau, I assume the federal bureau, uh, rests on a rough horizontal surface, and then it gives you the coefficients of friction. So our coefficient of static friction is 0 0.50. Oh, ah, no. Coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.40. A constant horizontal force just sufficient to start the bureau in motion is then applied. What is the acceleration of the bureau? So a bureau is a fancy word for like a cabinet or a desk. A chest of drawers, if you will. All right, so a horizontal force which is just sufficient to get it moving is applied. Um, and we're trying to find the acceleration, right? So I'm guessing a lot of people got stuck because it doesn't give you the mass. All right, so this is a perfect example of no numbers. no numbers. All right, so let's make our free body diagram. Let's see, we should always start with our force of gravity. So for us, that's just going to be mg, right? Yeah. Everybody okay with the, the transition from ag to g? Yeah. My normal force is going to be just big enough to cancel it, right? All right? So, and then there's also going to be friction. Since it's sliding, what kind of friction is it? Kinetic friction. Kinetic. Let me pause there for a minute. So there's, there's sort of two parts to this problem. You, in a sense, you need to deal with both static and kinetic friction here. Okay? The problem tells us that F is just big enough to get it moving. So when you say that, when you say we've got just enough force to get it moving, what? Slightly greater than static. Good. Your force is just slightly bigger than static friction, right? Mm -hmm. OK. So let's think about that. So our F is basically equal to that, right? I remember this being a little bit of a point of confusion. Remember, this is like this FFS max number, you guys represents kind of the breaking point between moving and not moving. All right? Some books will define FFS max as the largest force friction can exert. And some books define it as the smallest force that you need to get the object moving. And those are, yeah, they're, they're sort of, in a sense, it seems like those contradict each other. And they do, but I guess I want you to understand that this represents the breaking point between moving and not moving. OK? Good? Yeah. All right. So, well, that's equal to our coefficient of static friction times our normal force. Oh, well, that's the coefficient of static friction times mg, right? All right, so let's put that over here on our drawing. That's our coefficient of static friction, static friction times mg, right? Good? All right. What about force of kinetic friction, you guys? The force of kinetic friction is the coefficient of kinetic times normal force. So let's put that in our drawing. Mu kmg. Follow? Yeah. I heard a Y something in the back. Are we good? You were just doing the Y. You guys didn't know that's my kryptonite. Is it, anytime you say it, I have to do it. I can't not. So I'm saying it. 
right, we're done with this. Yes. Okay, all right, everybody good? It's like Cartman having to finish uh, Come Sail Away. Uh, all right, anybody know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah. All right, um, okay, so here we go. Net force equals net force. Mass times acceleration equals force minus force, right? So let me pause there for a minute. Is everybody okay with that last thing I just wrote there in blue? Everybody good? All right, why am I happy? Mass is cancel. Oh, so my A is just mu S minus mu K times G and solve it. So you get 0.1 times G, which is 0.98. Good, you guys? That's This one's a little bit shakier, but I think we get it. So where are you getting tangled up? Johnny, talk to me. Add your hand up. What do you got? Uh, so like the way I did it was basically just like, Say that again. You wrote the accelerations. What do you mean by it's the like, accelerations plural? This is twelve, right? So, because I was trying to find the other one. So, if you know the static friction, the, like the coefficient of static friction. Good. You know the acceleration. I just multiply the acceleration. So, so when you're when you say the acceleration, you're saying okay. the acceleration that static yeah. friction would produce. Yeah. And then the acceleration that it would. Gotcha. Once it broke for you. I gotcha. So I've seen people solve problems this way instead of adding forces, adding accelerations, which is kind of what you're talking about there. And mathematically, it sounds like it does work. You're saying, okay, well, here's the acceleration I would have under this force. Here's the acceleration I would have under this force, and then working with them. Um, I I don't love it just because the object doesn't ever attain any of those accelerations. Do you know what I mean? Mathematically, it works out because your mass is cancel, and I would be cautious of using that frequently. Okay. To me, you want to think in terms of forces. Okay. All right. There are some other questions. Some of you uh, expressed some discontent here. With the second blue line. This one. Yeah. I get that that force equals that force, but I don't understand on the right side of that equation how you're pulling those numbers. Uh, well, there's there's four forces on our on our object, right? Gravity and normal force, which I completely ignored, and the force from you pushing it. Remember, we decided that that force had to be equal to the maximum static friction, so that's this dude. Oh yeah. All right. Minus kinetic friction is working against the motion, so that's this dude. Okay. Good. All right. Any other problems with the number twelve? Are we good? Hey, how are you doing? You good? Yeah? Cool. Zach, how about you? You all right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah? Stay up watching uh, Stranger Things? No. Oh, I actually don't really care for that show. Oh, really? No. You're the guy. Yeah, it's just like, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So everybody's good on 12, yes? All right. <laughs> Where is my list of problems? There we go. All right. Um, Let's do 13. So you guys, I keep saying to you that this, this year, I can't possibly show you every problem. So I hope that as we're going through stuff, as you start, as you, as you see stuff where you're like, ah, I wouldn't have thought to do that, write those little tricks down. You know what I mean? And some of it, I think, is just going to be starting to work without the numbers as much as possible. It's but hard. it is hard. I get it. It's really abstract, right? So it takes some practice, but I think you guys will get there. All right, so 13, a car is traveling at 15 meters a second on a horizontal road. The brakes are applied, and the car skids to a stop in four seconds. What's the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road? OK, so can we pull up the side convos, please? All right, so our velocity starts out at 15 meters a second. Is the velocity going to stay 15, you guys? No. No. Those My final velocity is going to be zero. zero, and it tells us that that takes four seconds, doesn't it? Which means it All right. Um, 
Uh, da, 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 it says the brakes are applied. It skids to a stop. The word skids is very important here, okay? Because it's implying what type of friction? Kinetic. It's telling you that the tire's locked up and you're skidding to a stop, okay? Um, and so we are trying to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. All right? So, um, Sarah, I'm going to pick on you for a second because I think you were the one that asked about this, yeah? Sorry? Yeah. Okay. Did I? I said Sarah, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right, any idea about where to start or no? Um, I found delta X. Found delta X using this guy? So what'd you get? Uh, 30 meters, is that what it turns out to? Yeah. Okay. That's cool, I don't, how did that help you, I guess? Oh, you found the acceleration with that? Okay, cool. I probably would have just found the acceleration directly using this guy. But it doesn't matter. That's cool. So your acceleration turns out to be 3.75 meters a second squared, right? Good. I made a teeny mistake. Negative. Negative style, right? All right, so everybody good up to there? All right, now what? So we've already thought about our kinematics. What's the other type of thing we need to be thinking about? Forces. What should I draw? Free body diagram. You've got to get in the habit of making those, guys. All right, so here's the car. OK, so it's driving this way. Let's identify the forces. There's going to be gravity. It's going to be a normal. Oh, no, undo. Why, why do you hate me? Don't answer that. Did you like that chronological? What? 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 side conversations, you guys. The more you talk, the longer these take. Everybody get up through there? All right, Sarah, there's one other force acting on this thing. What do you got? Uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. So remember, the, the problem is about the car jamming on the brakes. So once you've jammed on the brakes, the idea is the car is moving forward. What's going to make it so it doesn't keep moving forward? Friction, right? So there's going to be some friction going this way, assuming that the car was driving this way. And maybe the confusing thing is there is no force pushing the car forward. Because velocity is not. Right? So the idea is the engine got the car moving, so now the car is driving along 15 meters a second, right? Then jam on the brakes, it's moving forward, friction is going to slow down the forward motion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now I think we can do one of these. Net force equals net force. So <laughs> MA equals force of kinetic friction, right? Yes. So let's see. Mass times 3.75, negative equals negative coefficient of kinetic friction times mg. Follow? Um, so now what? Masses cancel out. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. All right, and then your coefficient of friction is going to end up being 3.75 over 9.8, which is really just for those of you keeping score, that's just A over G, right? So you're saying that we should get more into the habit of um, variable manipulation? Okay. Yeah. Sir, are you good over there? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, was, it, was that we were just, 
Was that what was messing you up, the fact that there's nothing pushing it forward? Yeah. Does everybody understand why that's true? Yes. Okay. Um, so I remember you asked about 9 as well. Let's touch on that real quick. Is it the exact same thing? Okay. All right. So you're good on it? All right. Anybody want me to say anything else about number 13? No. All right. What else do we got here? Let's see. Uh, I know we needed to do 18. 14 and 17. Let's take a look. Where did I put my sheet? Ah, here. Okay, uh, let's see. 14. Okay, so let me talk about 14 real fast. I like this one because... Just uh, <laughs> go. That wasn't meant to sound snarky. I like 14 because of what I was talking about on either Thursday or Friday. Remember, when we talk about friction, I want to encourage you to get in the habit of saying sliding instead of moving. Okay? Remember we talked about the box of donuts sitting on my car when I jammed on the brakes? Yes. Okay? Assuming that the donuts don't go flying, what force is stopping the donuts? Static, static. static friction. Even though the donuts are technically in motion, right? Because mm -hmm. the car's in motion. Okay? So I guess just be conscious of that. Uh, so with that in mind then, 14 says uh, the floor of a railroad flat car is loaded with loose boxes. So here's the floor of the car, here's the boxes. Um, it says that there's a coefficient of static friction of 0 0.25. Uh, the train is initially moving at 48 kilometers an hour which you hopefully converted to meters a second and got, uh, well, what's it going to be? It's 3.6, uh, so it's going to give you one point, what is it, 13.3 meters a second, is that right? If that's right, I'm the smartest human being alive. <laughs> Prepare yourself here, but find out. Yeah. Woohoo! All right, cool. So there's our initial velocity. You guys didn't know, did you? Right here. All right. We want our final velocity to be zero because we're trying to stop it. Um, how short of a distance can the train be stopped at in a constant acceleration without causing the boxes to slide over the floor? So let's think about the forces that are acting on this thing. So once again, our force of gravity is mg. There's going to be a normal force, which is also equal to mg. Let's suppose that the train is moving to the right. So as the train stops, what direction do we need to push the boxes to have them slow down? To the left. What kind of, uh, what kind of force? Friction, and it's got to be static, right? Because our goal is we want the boxes to not slide. Good? Now, we're looking for the minimum displacement, right, the smallest distance, which corresponds to the biggest acceleration, right? In other words, the quicker you stop, the smaller your displacement's going to be, right? So the biggest acceleration corresponds to the maximum static friction force, right? In other words, we know that the force of static friction max is our coefficient of static friction times our normal force. So this is sort of like how much force we've got in our wallet. That's how much force we can use. There's no more than that, right? Yep. So this is going to be 0 0.25 times mg, right? Oh. Uh, what, tell me what you just realized, Eva. I just forgot that it gave us that 0.25. That was written right there. Gotcha. It's all good. All right. So uh, that means then that my net force here is my force of static friction max, right? So we get MA equals negative 0 0.25 mg. So cancel your m's. You get a quarter of mg. So your acceleration is negative, uh, what, 2.45 meters a second squared. Yeah. And then find your corresponding displacement. And I'm hoping it gives you what I got. I got 360, but I'm not done wrong. 
That, it, since the real answer is 36, my guess is you just put a decimal in the wrong spot. Okay. So let me see, squared divided by 2 times that. Yeah, it gives you 36.3 meters. So yeah, my answer was right. Uh. <laughs> Smartest person in the world. I got lucky this time. More often than right, you're usually right, Dan, and I'm wrong. Oh, I didn't realize that was why you're waiting. I thought you just wanted to be closer. To... All right. Are we good with this, you guys? Yes. Okay. All right. Um. So. Seventeen and eighteen. Big fan of seventeen. Let's do seventeen before we do eighteen. Okay, so here we go. Seventeen. A twelve newton horizontal force F pushes a block weighing five newtons against a vertical wall as shown. So here's the wall, here's the block. The problem tells us that our force pushing it. 12 newtons. It tells us it weighs 5 newtons. So that's the mass, right? So I can write 5 newtons like this. No. Big no. That's the force of gravity. Remember, you guys, weight and force of gravity are the same thing. If I wanted to find the mass, I'd have to take 5 and divide it by 9.8, right? And get like. 0.51 kilograms or whatever it is. Don't quote me on that number, but it's somewhere in that neighborhood. All right. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, it says the coefficient of static friction between the block and the wall is 0.6, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.4. Pretty good up to there? All right, let's finish our free body diagram. There are two more forces that I have not yet drawn in. So we need to think horizontally and vertically, right? So horizontally, we've got 12 newtons pushing the block to the right. Why doesn't it move to the right? Because there's a wall in the way. What do we call the force from the wall? Normal force. Which way does it point? To the left. Please, 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 please do not make the mistake of thinking that normal force always points up. <clears throat> Remember, the word normal means Again. perpendicular. What's it perpendicular to? The surface. The surface. So if my surface runs vertically, then my normal force has to be perpendicular to that, which is going to be horizontal. How big does the normal force have to be? 12 newtons, right? I guess negative if you want to keep track of your signs, right? Good? Because that's the force that you're pushing up against. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Follow? Yeah. All right. Now, hopefully, the block, well, I guess it depends on what we're trying to accomplish. I think we're trying to keep it at rest, right? So if it doesn't slide, what's going to prevent it from sliding? Friction. Friction. What kind? Static. Static, right? Or maybe there's not enough static friction and it does slide, in which case it's kinetic. But what we can safely say is there's going to be some sort of upward force of friction. We just don't know yet if it's static or kinetic. Any problems so far? Is this making sense? Yeah. All right, so let's see. Um, part A, will the block move? What should I figure out? Let's find our maximum static friction, right? Okay, if you don't know if the object is moving, see if there's enough force to overcome the static friction. So our force of static friction max is our coefficient of static friction times our normal force. So the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.6. Our normal force is 12. Multiply this, you get 7.2 newtons. Good. So, once you get this, you guys, this is what I'm doing with my honors students right now. Once you get this, the next question should be, can static friction prevent the object from slipping? Yes. Yes. 
And the answer is yes. How much force do we need to prevent it from slipping? Five. Just five newtons, right? Yep. And we've got 7.2 in our wallet, right? Yep. So this force of friction up here is going to be static. Five newtons will work. Notice it does not use the maximum. Say that again? Good. Yes, because otherwise it would be moving up. Exactly. All right, now, so think about this, you guys. When you take a thing and hold it up against the wall like this, if I don't push hard enough, notice I'm just pushing this way. I'm pushing horizontal. But if I don't push hard enough, it starts to slide. Why? Yeah, if I decrease my normal force, I'm also decreasing my static friction, right? Does that make sense? I shouldn't say that. I'm decreasing the amount of static friction that I, that I have to spend, right? I'm decreasing that maximum amount. Cool? Could we find the smallest coefficient of friction that would prevent this thing from sliding? That's the smallest force. So you just do 5 equals mu s times 12 and solve for mu, right? And you get whatever 5 twelfths is. Yeah. yeah. So if the force was exactly 7.2 in this case, would it start moving? That's the gray area. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah, that's where it's right on the verge of moving. So, all right. Everybody good on 17? Did I, was there a part B that I didn't answer? Oh, good. Yes, this is why I wanted to say this. In unit vector notation, this is huge, you guys. This is a thing that I think we've not talked about. I, and I think it's something you guys know, but this question puts a really specific point on it. It says, in unit vector notation, what is the force on the block from the wall? All right? Now, which of these forces is a force exerted by the wall? Normal force. Totally. The normal force, right? Because you're pushing the block this way, and the normal force is preventing it from moving that way. OK? So let's see, what about F? Where did F come from? U. That came from U, right? How about FG? That came from gravity, gravity from the Earth. How about static friction? Where did that come from? The wall. <laughs> right? Static friction is a force exerted by the wall. OK? I've been really uh, meticulous about making sure you guys understand that normal force is a force exerted by the surface perpendicular to the surface, right? OK? Good. What's wrong, Matt? Are you good? Yeah, it's a lot of surfaces. Yeah, a lot of surfaces, I know. Okay. Now, what about friction? Friction is also a force provided by the surface, but it's parallel to the surface. Okay? So in this problem, the wall is actually exerting two forces. It's exerting a horizontal force of 12 and a vertical force of 5. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Questions on 17? Nope. All right. When do we get out? 09? Yep. We have just enough time to do number 18. And then I think we got everything on the list, didn't we? Yep. Oh, shoot. The drag force problem. Let me talk about 18 real fast. Shoot. We're not going to have time to do both. Drag force one? Yeah. Drag force one? OK. All right. So here's the deal with 18. There are five forces on the, on the rock climber. Gravity, two normal forces, one between her foot and the wall, and one between her back and the wall. Those normal forces cancel out, but they are equal. Okay? And then there are two vertical forces from friction. Friction between her feet and the wall, friction between her back and the wall. Okay? So you can write those both in terms of the given coefficients of friction and your normal forces that are equal, and solve for Fn. Okay. Um, I feel like I may have even posted that one on my website. I'll check. If not, I'll, I'll put it up there for a thousand. Okay? All right. Drag force. All right. So we had to do number five, right? Have you guys picked up on the fact that the drag force numbers correspond to the section numbers? You know what I mean? Like today, four or five was due, and drag force problem number five was due. OK, so here we go, 4.2 number 5. Sally is skiing. She begins at rest on an in a hill inclined at 30 degrees. Coefficient of kinetic friction is, whoa, what is that mess? Uh, unfortunately, there's still air resistance. Uh, the drag force is blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's draw this. So here we go. 
I'm going to just draw a box in the interest of time. Okay, so let's identify the forces. There's gravity, which we should split up into components. Good? There's a normal force. Good? Two other forces. What do you got? Air resistance and friction, right? So, I'm going to just give myself a little room here. So, our force of friction should be our coefficient of friction times the normal force, right? And the coefficient of friction is 1 over 2 root 3. Did anybody figure out why I wrote it that way? Yeah. All right, so there's that. Um, and then we've also got drag force, right? Which is negative kV. All right, so are, are we okay? Can everybody read my scribbles? Do I need to do a big in it? All right, so here's the deal. Here's why I wrote it this way. Um, it tells us that the incline is 30 degrees, right? Yep. So probably worth noting, what's the sine of 30 degrees, you guys? One half. What's the cosine of 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2, right? So this is really root 3 over 2. This is really over 2. This is root 3 over 2. This is root 3 over 2. Ah. <laughs> so I'm going to clean up my drawing here. Let's do this. So my FG parallel is MG over 2. My force of kinetic friction is the root 3's cancel, and you get mg over 4. And then you've got a drag force of negative kV. And I'm not going to worry about the perpendicular forces because they're going to cancel anyway, right? Yep. Problems up to there. OK, so we're going to run out of time. Let me at least set up the differential equation. Is everybody OK with what I've done? All right, so here we go. Net force equals net force. Mass times acceleration equals, which way do you want to make positive? Make down the hill positive. So my acceleration is going to be positive. So I'm going to get mg over 2 minus mg over 4 minus kv. Um, Nope, you're right. We do need to put plus. Because if it's going down the hill, positive velocity, I want my drag force to be negative. No, I was right the first time. It should be negative. That's why you chose positive down So, Sabo, you just want to make sure that for positive velocity, you get a negative drag force. So, don't worry about it's technically plus negative KV. All right, we'll pick up tomorrow. 4-6 is due tomorrow.